Hello once again YouTube, I am Ben McIntosh, the real Benjamin McIntosh, the only Benjamin McIntosh that will do your DVD updates. Now, this is an actual DVD update showcasing the DVDs I got from Christmas on. I know I, I haven't uploaded, I should have uploaded this a long time ago because some of these films I kind of forgot about. As far as like, I think there's two I, I know that like I'm trying to review and I just can't really remember the whole film. Partially for two reasons. For Beverly Hills Cop, I was kind of busy and kind of drunk. So, trying to remember it's kind of hard. I'll probably go back and watch that again sometime. I do remember key aspects, just not a lot of detail. And then, Lethal Weapon, all the Lethal Weapon films, I'll watch them, remember it, and then the next day wake up and like know a couple things from it. Like the Jet Li scenes are the ones I really remember. Lethal Weapon 4. But anyway, just to give you kind of idea of how many DVDs I have gotten, um, I'm going to kind of give you a little hint here. See, there's a tiny stack. And there's the big stack. There's about four or five of those big stacks. There's there's uh, four big stacks and two smaller stacks of DVDs that I got from Christmas until like I'd say because I I mean from the time of like Christmas Day to uh, a month later I was getting like until New Year's you go from Christmas to New Year's and I was getting a ton of DVDs like every day. I would go in and grab a DVD from the store. Like I was spending money like no other, and I kind of wish I had some of that money. But I'm glad I got these DVDs because I love I love DVDs like probably more than a lot of people that do these DVD reviews. Although you might enjoy watching them a little better, um, I enjoy them a lot. Um, and this is uh, I'll kind of tell you when I try to get. Try to tell you when I got it, you know, because um, I know you're probably wondering that, and I know I'm rambling a lot. It's kind of late, but I decided to do a DVD update by myself without Noah, kind of do an actual kind of serious update, as serious as I can be, because I know I'm not really a serious person. But uh, we're gonna start off this DVD review with Tommy Boy, very good uh, movie starring. David Spade and Chris Farley. Some of the funniest scenes in this movie, you know, with the, like just Chris Farley, the way he moves is just hilarious. And the scenes with the deer, and then there's the scenes, you know, him making the sales and the holy shnikes. You know? Although this for my terrible mind, I thought he was gonna say holy shit balls. Which would have been funny, but and David Spade's just a, a great backup because he's just like, oh, come on, man. Get serious for once. And Chris Farley's like, rant! But er, the, the thing everyone knows from this movie is the fat guy in a little coat. Fat guy in a little coat. Everyone knows that uh, from it. And this is actually the uh, two disc edition. Kind of gives a look back at Chris Farley. And, you know, it, it, it's really for the DVD collectors, is this Holy Shnike edition. Because a lot of those, the better comedy movies, they released the blank, blank edition. Which for some, for some, it's not really a big difference. But, and for some, it is like this. Two disc is a big difference to have a two disc collector's edition of Tommy Boy. And for those of you who don't know what Tommy Boy is, sorry for taking so long to actually get to it, um, Chris Farley plays the son of, as his father owns a factory, and he's going to take over. Well, he's not the smartest. He took him forever to pass school. And, you know, David Spade's kind of the guy that's been doing a lot of the work in the factory, and he is put in charge of Tommy Boy by Tommy Boy's dad. And his, his dad's about to remarry. This woman has a son, and 
Turns out the woman and her son is actually her husband, and they're trying to get Tommy Boy's dad's money because Tommy Boy's dad does. Tommy Boy's dad does end up dying, and they're trying to take over the business and get his money and sell it to uh, the auto parts king, who is because they sell like brake pads or something. And the auto parts king is played by Dan Aykroyd, which was really good, really good spot by there by Dan Aykroyd. I love Dan Aykroyd, and um, really enjoyed um, the everyone came to work on this film. There, I mean, of course it's kind. They probably goofed around, but I mean, they got serious like when it came to like doing this film. Like there was no weak, there was no role, no matter how small, that was weak. You know. Everyone, I everyone should have been satisfied with the work they put in. That's all I'm saying about it. And this is probably gonna be like eight parts because I'm taking forever to talk about one DVD. As you saw, the stacks of films I have, you know, it's like a lot. I get a lot. Ever since my father passed away in March last year, I gotten a lot of DVDs because I just been making more money since then. I guess. Because I took over a lot of his responsibilities and got paid for them. But I mean, I've gotten a lot of DVDs. My mom bought me a couple copies, like of DVDs I already had. And then my friend made trades on those. I got some of his old DVDs. But because my mom, for Christmas, she actually bought me two movies I already had and I opened them in a row, and it's kind of funny. Like a wrestling DVD I already had, which I just gave my friend for Christmas. And he gave me Full Metal Jacket in return. Like, I mean, I switched it. Like, I was going to give him Full Metal Jacket, and I took Full Metal Jacket and gave him that. And then I, and then she got me a family guy thing I already had, and I just gave it to his brother. So, like, yeah, it turned out really well. But this next one is actually a DVD trade, because I, I, uh, my mom got me Last House on the Left. I don't really like that film, because I don't like films with rape or anything in them. I mean, I, I could probably watch the old one. I just couldn't, I just couldn't watch it, because it shows it, is what I said. So I, I traded him for a Hot Tub Time Machine, which is about uh, these uh, three guys who are friends in high school. Their friend had a suicide attempt, which really he was just drunk. And um, they had to look after him. They take him to this place he used to party in the 80s. Now it's like a total shithole. And they bring uh, the guy, John Cusack's character, as his nephew. And basically, they just do in a hot tub and they spill this like Russian energy drink on it. And they go to the 80s back and they're in like to everyone else they look like they did in the 80s but to them they still look like yeah and there's like a lot of weird plot twists and some slapstick comedy some unnecessary comedy but overall it was good it wasn't it's by no means a great comedy film but it is funny enough for me to have and to watch i've, I've seen it three times so it, it's funny enough for me to watch three times then it's it's pretty good um, kind of weird at points, but I mean, there's just some funny things in it, and, um, if you really like, um, the slapstick comedy, and just boob humor, or a lot of, like this guy, can't, I don't know the actor's name, Clark Duke, if you like shit he's in, like, like that, like that kind of comedy, then get this movie. The next one I also I also got for Christmas it is uh let's take that back so you can see it. This the camera lights in the way. Old school. Starring Will Farrell, Luke Wilson, and Vince Vaughn. And when you have an all-star cast like this, and it's a comedy, you have to live up past the names. You have to, or else the film's just gonna be shitty. Because you it it's called, it's almost a danger to put too many stars in one film. Because if you put too many stars in one film, each star everyone expects to do something. And if you don't develop it exactly what they expect, like if you put Arnold Schwarzenegger's festival at the Expendables, you expect to see Terminator and all that stuff together. Like you don't expect just like a new character. You want to see them together. You know, you want to see like the Avengers but with the action stars. And but I'm starting to venture off. Old school was really funny. It's about these three guys. Uh, Will Ferrell gets married. Will Ferrell's character, I should say, gets married. Vince Vaughn 
you know, so trying to get him to go, you know, against it. And Luke Wilson found his wife cheating on him with a couple people, and decide and he moves out and he moves it in a place that's on a college campus, and they decide to open their own fraternity. But they let a lot of people in that aren't in college. Like there's a like, 90 year old guy in blue. And basically the deans and that they picked on in high school was just trying to shut him down. Uh, bribery and uh, messing up with this chick's college career. All this stuff. I mean, it makes him do all this stuff. All because he doesn't want them to win. But yeah, there is some real, like the streaking scene, and you'll find out what I'm talking about when you watch the movie. It is one of my favorite scenes of the movie. And uh, yeah, uh, this is the unrated and out of control edition, but yeah. Um, check it out. Next one is a uh, classic, Mrs. Doubtfire. Robin Williams and Sally Fields. Fantastic, you know. I was very satisfied. I've seen this this film because old school. I've seen four times. Mrs. Doubtfire, because I owned the VHS before this, so I've probably seen this about eight or nine times. Probably more than that, but just on record, probably about eight or nine times. You know, as, as far as my childhood can remember, it's been about eight or nine times. And I, I laugh. I still laugh every time I see it because it, it is a funny, timeless movie. And I was really satisfied with how it went out. You know, which I think I'll always be satisfied with how these movies, because these movies are <sighs> fantastic. Excuse the yawning. I know I'm not like a professional DVD reviewer, and I have like all these cuts and stuff and cut scenes, and but I I just I'm a beginner, you know. And I just hope you like the way I think about DVDs. Miss Doubtfire, Robin Williams, Sally Fields, they get a divorce, and their three kids are starting to get affected. So Robin Williams only gets to see him like one day. So he he disguises himself because his his gay brother is like a makeup artist. He disguises himself as Miss Doubtfire, their nanny, and you know is is babysitting them and caring for them and learns a lot of valuable skills. But then when he's revealed, you know everyone you know takes it the wrong way, like you know in most films do. There's the falling point, then everyone rises back up in the end. He gets his own like show. Because he's a voice actor, and this Robin Williams is very good in family movies. He is one of the dirtiest comedians, but somehow he works in a family movie, and he's just really enjoyable. But yeah, Miss Doubtfire, I love this. I'm glad I got it on DVD because I've had it on VHS for so long, and my VCR—I don't know how many how many more years it has left on it. I hardly ever watch VCR tapes anymore. Couldn't tell you the last time I watched one. Trying to get them converted to deep blank DVDs. I haven't even started doing that yet. I've just been buying the DVDs when I find them. Because my buddy's supposed to um, convert them. Because I'm supplying the blank DVDs. But he has to erase the blank DVDs. Download the software. And I'm like, I don't want to mess with that right now. So, for the time being. I'm not going to worry about it. Just, just not going to worry about it. The next... Uh, thing DVD I'm going to talk about is uh, another one I got for Christmas Night at the Museum it's a really good uh, Ben Stiller film Ben Stiller kind of gets shit on a lot by movie reviewers but it's about a guy Larry Daly who takes over as a security guard at a museum and everything Every, all the like standees and stuff come to life and because of, of this tablet from a pharaoh and the old night guards are trying to take it and sell it and make money and all this weird stuff and because the tablet gives them power because they're old but still acting young a lot of weird stuff going on with that you know but I, I, I love the I love my favorite character is Robin Williams character and I've seen this movie oh too many times I bought the DVD so I just don't have to pay attention anymore because in school they'll show like in, when we were in middle school and we had nothing else to do we were literally they would literally pop in night at the museum that or national treasure too so i've seen night at the museum the whole movie 15 times not shitting you and i've seen half of it like seven times added to the 15 i've seen the full thing 
and I just watched it again. So I mean, I was, I know this movie through and through. And I, uh, National Treasure Two, I've seen, the, I've watched it in theaters first of all. Second of all, I saw it in school, the be the first half of it fourteen times because my science teacher had a headache every other day. Yeah, that, it's a good film. It's just don't watch it too much because it, it's not one of those things you can just keep watching and then not get boring. Uh, the next one is kind of a shitty movie I got. It's called The uh, Monster Hunter. Because I, I like David Carradine. So I was like, I'll get it. That was a good will. And uh, it was about this guy. Hunts a serial killer because he, he sees him as aliens or something. Like It was really fucked up what happens in this film and at the end you're sitting there and you're going what the fuck did i just watch and was that matthew lillard and it wasn't matthew lillard but it looked a lot like him with cut hair and you're like what the you're like what the hell is going on here you know and you never know what's going on because that film was kind of gay but for two dollars I'll keep it on the shelf, but I probably... The only time I'll ever watch it again is if I'm really drunk or I'm just like, you know what, I need I need, I need a laugh at the terrible film, art of filmmaking. I'll pop that in. And it, it was kind of it was really scratched. That's why it was only $2. Like, I mean, look. I don't know if you can kind of see it, but all around that center there is scratched. It's like there's this one part in the center that will go and then stop. So you had to like go up to that part, skip to the next part, and rewind it a little bit, but don't rewind too far. Very complicated way to watch a movie too, so that kind of ruined the experience for me. Um, yeah, it really did. I gotta stop this video. So um, thank you all for watching, and um, peace out.